Hello, my name is Cameron Archer. I am uh, had a long association with agricultural history and museums in, in Australia. Our system in Australia is somewhat different from other, other countries. Um, we're, a, I term, a settler society. So we've got two waves of uh, habitation across our landscape, our indigenous era and our, and our European era. So I need to talk, when I address this theme, to talk about both of those eras. I'm now um, mainly involved in incorporating or supporting uh, learning about agriculture in Australian schools as chair of the Primary Industries Education Foundation. So my focus uh, in this address will be in the context of the theme, but also in the context of school student learning. The idea of a settler society is probably very different from European uh, context of agricultural history and environmental history because Aboriginal people were um, living across this land for 40 to 60,000 years before Europeans invaded in for permanent settlement in 1788 at, at Sydney. So there's now um, a great um, a great emphasis on better understanding Aboriginal history, Aboriginal land management, especially in the context of environmental history and the Australian bushland. As you would have seen on your televisions, uh, the Australian bush is uh, extremely uh, volatile in hot, hot, dry weather and, and burns uh, with the eucalypt trees and whatever um, incessantly in, in hot summers, sometimes more than others. And climate change is impacting on that. <clears throat> the other issue which has come to fore has been the um, recent publication of a book called uh, Dark Emo, Emu Black Seeds, um, which is a uh, really important book, uh, which uh, written by a fellow called Bruce Pascoe. It's um, put a great emphasis on the fact that Aboriginal people were just not um, hunters and gatherers, but was, were also um, were farmers and uh, grew um, plants and crops. Uh, and that's contested, it's very much contested. There's a lot of debate about that. So um, the whole philosophy of hunters and hunters and gatherers versus uh, settled and civilised societies and all sorts of things with our Judeo-Christian background um, come to fore on that. So that's an issue that's currently in debate in terms of land use. So when it comes to European impact on uh, agriculture um, and, and the land, it's, it's quite dramatic, as, as you know, and, and that... The, the impact of European agriculture on um, Europe itself has been gradual, but whereas in, in um, this country, it was a very stark contrast between how Aboriginal people were managing the land and how we introduced sheep and cattle and managed the land henceforth. And then we had the impact of um, industrial revolution, ploughing, uh, growing crops, uh, lots of soil erosion and land degradation <clears throat> and, and agricultural science has now spent a lot of effort in terms of addressing those issues. How well that's articulated in agricultural museums in, in this country or any museum in this country is, is, is um, the issue. It's probably not articulated at all apart from the, the issues that have happened as distinct from the solutions to them. And I guess that's where I'm um, fairly passionate about what we can do in schools about um, communicating the operation of modern agriculture and food production to to students through the school curriculum. The uh, what I see in agricultural museums in this country, and there's that, and there's no specific agricultural museum as such. There, there's a lot of rural museums that are largely agriculture, but they're usually just uh, reflect the district and the equipment and things that are in the district of a very narrow time span of um, how, how things operated, often uh, more nostalgic rather than interpretive. So um, we don't have the sort of uh, 
great organisations like I've seen in in, in Europe and and the UK and also uh, know of in 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 America where uh, there's greater interpretation of uh, agriculture in a museum context. So we've got a long way to go, but we've also got a lot of challenges. And I think I think those challenges are just not owned by us because I think we we don't really talk about how modern agriculture works and how we've progressed with science, how we've uh, been able to make, how we made a lot of mistakes with um, agricultural chemicals in the mid 20th century and how we still are using agricultural chemicals extensively to produce the food that we eat and um, how there's been so much research on integrated pest management and other ways of overcoming um, some of the issues that created by monocultures, um, especially genetic, genetic uh, modification, etc. And those things are happening, but they're not necessarily discussed in the context of uh, modern education and also um, in, in a museum context. So I, I think there's much more we can do there if we're going to really assist future generations to understand how their food's produced, how it was produced, how we have worked very hard as, as a community and as, a, as an industry to uh, improve and impact and lower the impact of agricultural practices on the landscape. One of the things I see happening with the concepts of sustainability is that there seems to be an underlining feeling at times is that you can, you can produce food and fibre without having any, any impact on the environment. And, and uh, there's this ideal that there's no impact of, of undertaking these practices. Well, unfortunately, that's not the case in my view. And we, we're better off understanding the impacts, learning about them and working to reduce them rather than thinking there's no impact whatsoever. So in, in my, where my thoughts are is to do with environmental history to do with agricultural history and how we can better communicate what's happening in the real world to, to um, the community and also school students into the future. And uh, I believe agricultural museums, as they're set up in other countries and hopefully sooner or later in this country, have a, a, a major role to play, particularly with schools. So I look forward to discussing that and other matters into the future and, and at the conference. Um, I haven't talked too much about climate change. I think that's worked over pretty well. And, and um, we have to deal with that um, in terms of how we farm into the future. So I look forward to our discussions henceforth. Thank you.